Yeah. I'm Frank Burke. Uh, I started Dinosaur Rocketry last year after Narcon. I gave a presentation on um, doing RC rocket gliders using uh, Depron foam, which is a sheet foam that um, the uh, RC uh, part jet guys use a lot. And so I've been doing it for about a year. Um, and my whole point in doing that was basically to try and encourage people to try RC rocket gliders. Uh, there weren't really any commercially available kits at all. Now there's a couple of uh, uh, 18 millimeter and some uh, like quarter and half A's now that are starting to come out to use the micro bricks, but there really wasn't anything in the 24 millimeter range. And all the rocket glider stuff that was out there really was uh, pod and boom type competition or uh, hand launched or a discus launch gliders. And to me, I'm not a competition guy. Um, I do competition shooting, but my rocketry and airplane stuff's just for fun. And uh, pot and boom to me is just boring. Um, I, I wanted something that looked like an airplane. Um, so I started doing these kits. I've got uh, seven, seven different kits. They're all in the um, like 39 to 42 inch range. So they're fairly big, um, but they're very lightweight. They're uh, eight to uh, 12 and a half ounces. Um, they're designed specifically for the 24 millimeter E6 rocket motor, which is a seven second burn. It's a great motor. It's a fairly gentle boost. You know, you can adjust it if you need to. It's not so fast that it's gonna do a power loop if it trims off or something like that. Um, they're all designed to uh, boost vertically on a rail. You don't need a special, um, a special pad or anything. They just uh, they just they, they come with rail buttons, or you can get them with launch lugs. Um, they just boost straight up. You use neutral controls because they're flat plate wings, so there's no uh, lift change for speed. And then uh, you just pitch them over and uh, click in a little bit of up trim. And they've got really light wing loadings. Uh, they they glide fairly slowly, but they look the motors in the back end uh, just like a rocket plane. So they're modeled after like the X15. SR-71, Dinosaur, um, a couple of the other lifting bodies, the HL-10, the uh, X-24, and then I've got one that looks like the SD's Interceptor, um, but with a larger wing, so it has a little bit of glide. Um, anyway, and so again, I'm just, I, I'm just charging my cost for the work to cut these out. I'm cutting them out by hand to order. Um, and um, you know, and then the, the cost of the parts and the shipping. So um, I have a website, dinosaurrocketry.com. Um, there's uh, videos on there. All the instructions are online, along with build photos, so you can read through how to put them together. You look at, can look at how they go together. Most of the way I've done the kits, I install the spars. They're glued in. Uh, they have a special um, tape, uh, it's a surgical tape. Um, to hold them in. Uh, on the X-15, the full flying tail surfaces are already installed for you. Um, and basically they come out of the box and the joints are taped, so you unfold them, put glue on the, on the, the tape line, and then you've got your large piece, and then they're, they're capped and slotted, so they, they mechanically slide together. And you use a, uh, a foam safe super glue, uh, or a uh, spray uh, contact cement like 3M77, depending on what the application is. So they take about an hour, hour and a half to put together, um, and then maybe 45 minutes to install electronics. They're, they're all two channel, so you just need two, uh, two nine gram servos, so they're, they're fairly cheap, um, a receiver, and then a single cell, uh, small lithium battery, so there's not a lot of wiring and extra stuff you need to get. You do need a transmitter. Um, of course, the most modern transmitters have uh, multiple model memory, so you get one transmitter, you can get different airplanes. Um, they all have the motor in the tail, and I've got a little adapter that uh, you can get with the model that basically plugs into the uh, motor mount and is held in by the motor hook. So it clicks in place, and it's got a little plywood plate, and you can put a little $15 um, Outrunner brushless motor um, in the tail and uh, run a, you know, put a speed control on it, and then you can run it as a pusher airplane and just hand launch them and that's how I fly my planes most of the time actually at the flying field and uh, you know with a reasonable battery for the CG you can get four to five minutes of flight time and uh, if you want to fly it as a rocket you just unplug three wires and pull the motor out stick a rocket motor in and use a little bit lighter battery to make sure your CG is in the right place and you're good to go so uh, they're very easy to fix if they uh, if you break but they're they're really light 
and um, it's, you know, you'd have to try pretty hard to, to really kill one. But if you have a little bit of RC flying experience, where you know you're not going to get confused with direction, um, they're pretty pretty straightforward. So anyway, there you go. Thanks. They're awesome too. I like the style. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And and uh, Mark at Sticker Shock 23 does uh, cut vinyl markings for all of them. Um, so the pictures that I've got over on the table, over there, those are all done with his uh, vinyl markings. You know, you can obviously do your own. Uh, but most of them, I mean, they come in a, in a bright white uh, finish, um, so you don't need to paint them. It's, it's a foam, it's waterproof. Uh, the Mach 2, which is a upscale of the Mach, the old century Mach 10, um, that one does have a cardboard tube that's white, so you don't have to paint it. It's just you don't want to fly it in the rain, probably. But all the other ones are, you know, it's just foam, so there's no, no surface preparation or anything that you need to do. It sands really easy. You can round the edges. Um, but it really doesn't do anything to flight performance. The speeds and stuff are so slow that, uh, you know, the stuff's pretty thin. It's not really going to, uh, you know, they're not going to get a thermal anyway. But uh, uh, anyway, there you go. All right, thanks. So I'm Gary with Aerotech. Uh, What's Aerotech? Yeah. <laughs> did, did they make RCS, one? right? RCS. <laughs> Ray uh, yeah, yeah, that too. Uh, I'm glad I wrote my number on here because I got a half hour out of uh, Columbus and I get a call. I'm looking at the number. It's from, from Columbus number. Who knows me here, right? Well, this is uh, Southwest Baggage. Uh, you leave something on the carousel? No, I have my computer bag, I have my, my duffel bag, I'm thinking, what? Oh, there's a box with your name on it. I thought, oh, you ever had one of those moments? <laughs> yeah. it's like, how in the world did I do that? So TSA didn't run in and go, no. well, that's an empty box that says Aerotech on it. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, so I'm thinking, I'm, all, I'm half an hour away from Columbus, and it was horrible traffic. I really want to go through this again, you know, and I thought, well, maybe Ed LaCroix and I or somebody will drive back with me to Columbus, and I thought, no, that's just going to be a big waste of time, so I turned around and went back and got it. So, got here about an hour later than I wanted to. And just in time for dinner. For, di for what? For dinner. For dinner, yeah, just in time. Well, um... Made a few little notes here. So, um, about the middle of last year, uh, my son Charlie, we've been kind of grooming him at the company as a shipping manager, and he had he'd gotten a degree in business and marketing uh, at UNLV, and it was actually my plan way back to try to get somebody from the family involved in the business, you know, to kind of carry on. And as like, like Vern Estes said several years ago at a Midwest. NARM sometime, he said, it's time for the young whippersnappers to take over. So that was the plan, and uh, I think he's doing a great job. I don't know if any of you interacted with him or saw him at NARM last year or, or what, but uh, really happy with some of the things he's bringing to the company. And as some other people said, injecting new life, <laughs> so as well as the old life is <laughs> not doing. No, I mean, you know, sometimes it takes some new, some new thinking. And uh, I think he's doing a great job. Um, so some of what, what we're talking about is the result of collaboration with him or some of his, you know, pushing some of the ideas uh, through him. And, uh, you know, it's like we have limited capability, so I know there's everybody wants something new or different, and it's, some of these projects take months or even years to bring to fruition. So. Some of what you see here is, is stuff we've been working on for quite a while. And with a small company of 11 or 12 people, it just takes a while to get, to get things done. So, especially when you're dealing with government agencies and private agencies like the NAR and Tripoli, um, trying to get things certified and approved, it, it, it just takes time. So we appreciate your patience. Um, one of those things that we've been working on um, and it was actually a result of some dealer input and then 
also our own input to try to figure out which motors to, to make this way. We've introduced uh, two new reloads. It's for the 38 millimeter hardware. This is for the 38 240 hardware. Is the uh, H130. It's instead of a two grain H123, it's a four grain H130. So it's about the same amount of propellant, but the grains are cut in half, so they're only 30 grams each. Uh, so they can be mailed because that's the weight limit uh, for U.S. Postal Service. And then the other one is uh, for the 38360 case is an H. I'm sorry, an I-180. So these were just reason, uh, recently triple certified. And uh, so both of those are mailable under the 30 gram. Correct. Awesome. Yeah, just like the what the H-180 and the H-128. <coughs> yeah. Somebody asked me, can you make that in a J-350? I thought. Realize that's going to be 12 grains. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you stack up lots and lots of Bates grains, you end up with, you know, critical modulus failure, and grains ejecting, and all kinds of problems. You could, you know, the, the idea behind this originally was to have the user glue the grains back together with 5 minute epoxy. It's still a thought for the big ones, possibly. Um, we could go with bigger motors, but we'd have to make the cores bigger, and you know, you'd start losing performance. Uh, one thing about these motors, because the grain's so short, and if you know how to base grain regresses, but instead of having a hump-shaped curve, it's more of a triangular curve. So you see that on the curve there. So, another thing about these uh, tubes that we've been, you know, we've got the thrust curves, all the motor data is on the labels. And we've also added, again, from customer and dealer comment, we've added um, identification on the end of the tubes for those dealers, for example, that pack those two things in their trucks sideways. And I don't cut my fingers on staples on them either. Right. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, easier to remove. So, yeah, we've, uh, you know, a lot of these things, they seem, seem small, but they add up to, I think, significant improvements. Um, so those are out, and those we actually started shipping those already. So contact your favorite dealer. We did sell out pretty quickly, so we're we're making more. Um, so I'll be interested to hear how well you like them when you fly them, because they should really kick off the pad faster than the regular motors. Um, we also brought out what we call the cross loads. Those are 75 millimeter reloads that are certified in Cesaroni hardware. Uh, Cesaroni did that years ago with their cross compatible, so we're we're doing this, you know, the same thing because uh, hey, you know, there's a lot of hardware out there, and we'd like to sell some more reloads. So um, if, if if that's what you choose to do, you know, we we will support that. Um, here's something new. You you may have read about it, but I'll actually show it to you. So this is a new uh, 75 millimeter reload adapter system. I guess I can open it. Funding constraints. We never machine, you know, made them and, and uh, tested them, but these have been tested, certified. So essentially, you, you know, if you have like a three grain 75 case and you want to run a two grain load in it, you put the two grain load in. Uh, this bulkhead substitutes for the regular bulkhead that drops in with your O-ring, and then the spacer goes on top like that, and then you just thread in the retaining ring. On top where the bulkhead would be. <coughs> Works like a charm. <coughs> Pass that around. So that saves money on hardware. Um, you know, we've uh, 
I can't remember exactly what we're charging for that system, but it's, it's fairly inexpensive. And it's certainly less expensive than buying the equivalent number of cases that you need to fly all those reloads. The um, idea is you buy the longest case and then use the spacers correct. for the smaller loads. Unless you're going for altitude or something where you can't tolerate the extra weight, but most, most of our rockets, let's face it, are over optimum weight anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and just kind of going back in time a little bit, uh, you may not be aware, but we brought out a, a new spacer for the 54 millimeter reload adapter system. It's a half length kind of, so it's for use with the, the 2800 case for the L1, you know, the K1050 L1000 motor case. So you can actually uh, use that casing and then run, what, down to, uh, I don't know if you could, I guess you can run down to a four grain uh, in that. So. Uh, I don't know how many people know my brother Robert uh, started a company called Rosenfield Aerospace and he's making uh, he's making these rail guides that are really cool. Um, we're going to start including them in Aerotech kits, no extra charge. Uh, I can't tell you exactly when we're going to do that, but uh, pretty soon. We just have to write some new instructions for them. So. Um, are those uh, surface mount? They're surface mount, yes. Because Acme makes aluminum ones. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. These are well, these are plastic. Okay. So uh, a lot of places won't let you fly uh, the Acme aluminum guides because yeah, they gouge the rails. The rail yeah, the rails. The rail launch rails. That's pretty much been gone a long time ago. Everybody's using the plastic stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. What kind of adhesive do you use for that? Oh, you just use epoxy. epoxy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can. Uh, if somebody wants a sample, go ahead and pop it open and take one. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, how many samples are you doing away? <laughs> yeah. I got some other samples too. And yeah, we're going to have them for 2.6, uh, well, for all the kits 2.6, 1.8, 4 inch kits. So I think, I can't remember. You know, the, the, the difference isn't that big of a deal. So if you want to use it, you could probably use the 1.9 and a 2.6. You know, a little more epoxy. Um, you know, we, uh, we brought out these nifty motor retainers, and uh, they're pretty low cost, $14.99, I think. Um, we're now including them in all the Aerotech kits. Wow. No extra charge, or, well, we had a price increase, but they're, it wasn't specifically because of this. But anyway, we're, we're including those. Are we going to do more sizes here? Of here to, what's that? More sizes of those? You know, I, we're thinking about it, but um, that's kind of a delicate political issue. Uh, let me put it that way, because of Aerocon and stuff, or Aeropac, not Aerocon. Um, I want to say, if somebody really needs a motor retainer, you can keep one. I don't know how to give them out other than throw them into the audience. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give you the 15 bucks. Yeah, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just, look at it. I'll, I'll, buy a, I'll buy a 29 right now, I need one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. You know, these are reasonably scale looking. What's that? They're reasonably scale looking, like they're sounding rockets and stuff. They look like mm -hmm. the real launch shoes. Yeah. I, I would ask if uh, you know we're trying to. Bob, I'm trying to see that Bobby gets a little more business. If he's he's willing to do custom stuff, so if you uh, if you need something specific to your needs, uh, give him a you know send him an email through uh, RosenfieldAerospace.com and see if he'll build you something. He's really good. I bought one of his first entire rockets. Yeah. Printed and it's a keeper. Yeah, they're collectors. <laughs> But he's, he just needs a little help in the marketing area. You know, I try to encourage him to get on the forum and talk to the customers and get an idea of what they want. And he's just a little bit, he's not exactly, what's the word? Um, socially competent, I guess, or he, he just doesn't like dealing with a lot of people. So, but trying to, trying to urge him into that, maybe, uh, maybe if he gets a little feedback, you know, it might help him. So. Uh, let's see, quickly going through it, 
We have a new level two kit coming. Charlie is spearheading that effort. Um, four inch diameter kit that'll take 38 millimeter motors. Uh, it will, I believe it'll have, uh, well, no, it uses our molded fins, but uh, trimmed down a little bit. Um, and we have a couple of low cost kits coming up. Again, these are long, these projects just take us a long time. Um, and they'll be small, minimum diameter kits uh, that you can fly. In. They'll be low cost, so you don't have to worry about getting them back if you don't want to. Um, Super Thunder. A lot of people like the, the, the uh, H550 reload and the single use motor. Well, guess what? We're going to make more of those. We're going to make, uh, we're working on some 98 millimeter versions and we'll probably do some of the other ones too, some different diameters. Uh, just come out with some really rude motors that, uh, you know, it's kind of an area that we we haven't really delved in. The competition's been doing more of that, but we're going to be offering some product that will be competitive with that. So, real, uh, real interested to see how that, how that comes out and what the looking like. I think, I think you'd be real happy with the way those look. I'm going to kind of go along with that. Somebody's got a knife, you want to open that? <laughs> we, had to, we had to design and make a new nozzle for these high thrust motors. Some of them have uh, over 1,600 pounds of thrust. Wow. So, and we found, the hard, found out the hard way that our existing 98 millimeter nozzle didn't hold up to it. Just didn't have enough material in the critical areas. So we built the, the beefiest 98 millimeter nozzle out there. Um, and that's actually available on the RCS store for those that need quote replacement parts, you know, for your motors and so on. It's like rough under plastic. That's plastic. No, so it's one use. Yeah, well, yeah, it's ostensibly that's, one use, but you could you could reuse it if you wanted to. Right? That's like double the length of the other one that I got from you before. Is right. that what you increased the length? Well, it's just increased in all in every way. Oh, okay. It's a longer throat? No, it's well it's it's a short throat, undrilled, but you know it's designed to be opened up. Okay. So we've opened them up to an inch and a quarter, and it's a one-inch throat as molded. Mm -hmm. um, but it's worked real well. We've used what? it on and the N twenty two twenty and a and an M six thousand rail. Okay. Okay. Aluminum on aluminum is a bad idea. Yeah. We're also yeah, working on some, some so big single-use motors up to O size, people and we've had some successful tests with that. The products almost not so exist anymore. There's a lot of little things we're doing, you well, know, we in all directions. Um, so we hope those I think Giant Leap still has some. Picked up the liquidation stuff. It'll be kind of in between. It'll be cheaper than buying a reload and traveling around the country and never see that stuff used. For the guy who doesn't fly exactly. often enough to recoup the cost. Right. Well, we thought about it. You know, coming out with big, new, bigger motors and with hardware, it's just it's just a huge thing for people to buy. You know, invest in a big piece of hardware that's going to be one, two, three thousand dollars, and they may only fly it once or twice. You know, not infrequently. So, our feeling is we're better off doing bigger. You know. We're going to do bigger motors, maybe do single use for the most part. So is it 150 millimeter? Well, we could go there. <laughs> I'm talking about big, you know, 98s that are about 54 okay. inches. <laughs> like yeah. pickle pogo stick. Yeah, yep. Um, do you have any 3 inch DMS motors? We do. Yeah, it's the, the uh, M1350 and the M, what is it, L, or the L875. Okay. Yeah, they're the. They're the type you have to actually glue the bulkhead in after you, it's more of an LMS type okay. because of the shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't ship them, you'd have to ship them 1.3 if they were fully assembled. Right, okay. So it's kind of shipped like a reload, but everything's done, you just put it all in and put the bulkhead <laughs> in, we give you a little epoxy kit, you mix it, pour it, and you fly it the next day. Okay. We've got good luck with that. Uh, this audience is probably interested in questions. What's going on with the quest? Sure. No? What's going okay. on? Yeah. What's, what's, going on? what's going on with quest? I want to talk about quest. Quest igniters. Where's the igniters? Okay. I'm going to give you probably more information than I should give you. 
We like that. Uh, the Chinese, uh, even when Bill was doing it, uh, they, they, were, they kept raising their prices on the motors. Um, and the last shipment we got in was just, you know, between the cost of the motors and the cost to get them over here was ridiculous. And I'm not even sure we broke even on them. Okay, maybe it was close. So we wanted, we held off. We are actually working on our own technology for A, B, and C motors. And we've actually awesome. started the certification process. We, we found out in the first set of certification motors that there was an aging problem with a couple of different parameters of motor, like the, a, an epoxy bond issue and a nozzle issue. So we've had to go kind of go back to square one, and we're in the process of redoing the motor design and getting a new set certified. So we're working on it, but it's taken longer than I expected. But we want a product that's gonna work and last. And, you know, when we ship them, you fire them next year, they're still gonna be good. Not, you gotta fire them in three months, or your nozzle's gonna kick out. We don't want that. Um, so we're working on that angle. I really don't wanna buy any more Chinese motors unless you have to. Uh, we've actually pursued other angles that I probably shouldn't talk about, but that hasn't worked out either. So um, the problem is the Chinese don't want to sell us Q2 G2s without selling us motors. So we're probably going to import a small number of motors so we can get a, a fairly good igniter order in. And we'll get enough to fill all the orders we have and have some left over. But I, I cannot tell you for sure that we're going to, all, we're going to have Q2 G2s forever. Uh, I don't know. To buy a couple hundred of them. Yeah, we're, we're getting, we're doing what we can. But are they, are they, are they lasting longer than the older ones? What do you mean by last longer? Some of the early ones, after a year, they actually wouldn't fire. The bridge wire inside would short, mm. and the pyrogen wouldn't pop. I'm not aware of that issue. They were the ones that might have been before my time. Well. They actually were the ones that came with some of the Aerotech stuff, and then oh. you changed something, and then they worked again. Well, I think those were ones that we dipped. I'm talking about the, the real Q2 the real, G2 okay. that has the little shiny bead on the end. Okay. Yeah. Those, that's what people want. That's what they want. So we're going we're to get some of those, I think. You know, we had a big order, and... Supposedly, what held it up was that big explosion they had in China. Just shut down all, all this hazmat shipping out of there. Remember that and they had that port they had? Yep. It was just outrageous. Um, and, you know, they were claiming that's why we couldn't get them. So, um, now they're just saying, you know, we want to ship them with the motors. And, you know, so we're trying to work something out there. Uh, there's, so, so the deal is, if we can get them, let's buy them now. Buy them while you can, because I can't guarantee you continuous supply. We yeah. put a notification out, like on the Tripoli forum, about that, about the availability of those. Have we? No, or will, or will you even announce? I don't know. I, okay. That's kind of in Charlie's uh, department. You know, he's kind of handling that. If if you've got them, I mean, are you just going to do the six packs? Are you going to do twenty five bucks again? Probably six packs. Twenty five bucks be real nice. Mm -hmm. Those of us that want to buy a couple hundred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I know it may not make I, as I much weight. I don't really know how many are going to be left over after the order. Yeah. Bill. It's going to be enough for a while, but I think, you know, we'll probably let, somehow we'll get the information out there either through message to the deal, probably through the dealers. That's the best way. Because they're the ones that got to sell them anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, they, they, really, they should get them. Um, so that's... We're actively pursuing all that. But I think 25 packs are a good idea, even on the retail side. Yeah. Something for you guys to consider to help you bulk your order up, too. And even if you're not, you know, even if you're not discounting a whole lot of a buck or two. I mean, I mean that's, yeah, you, you buy 24 and you get a 25th beer free or something. <laughs> right? Gary, you're already making it matter about the same size and shape. What is special about the Chinese people that you can't duplicate? Well, I think people like them because they can, you know, for black powder clusters, and they just they're more reliable than uh, the Estes igniters. They're just low, like the ideal low, black powder igniter. Very low current. Yeah, 
Yeah. And you, you can't make one like that? Well, we've got the first fire mini, which, yeah. I mean, that it takes a 12, generally a 12 volt battery. So, I mean, I think they're fine for composites. We'll probably end up using it. If we have our own technology motors, we're going to use the first fire minis. The current Estes igniters are failing and not useful. As a matter of fact, the, the clear ones are failing in an extraordinary function to the point that I'm actually having to start having to build my own black powder igniters because I'm running short of the old ones that actually work. They, it's extraordinary. The Quest igniters, as he said, were great for black powder motors, but then we couldn't get them anymore because of the supposed explosion. So there's, 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 something's happening here. Estes made the igniters for their uh, composite motors that they called uh, a fancy name. They would not light the motors that were made by Aerotech for Estes. And they still are hanging on hobby uh, and stores for sale and they don't light the motors. They will not light them except if you're really lucky, the, the, the quick, the, the, the quick dark motor will light with them. The other ones won't. And their new clear igniters for black powder motors are failing at extraordinary rates, almost 50% to where kids are coming out with rockets at our clubs. They're firing motors and they don't light and the igniter is failing. And we're using up our stash of igniters to help other people fly. Yeah. That's how I, bad I would recommend working. using first fire minis when you can. I know they're more expensive, but they'll, the reliability is a lot better. I've been using a QGG too for new yeah, yeah. kits. Uh, Mine's all dried up since I bought too many of them, but yeah, I know well, I'm oh, yeah. remaking them. Yeah, a lot of people think they're the best uh, yeah. yeah. igniter ever. I yeah. probably would agree for the Firestar. Firestar, the best thing I've ever had. 2295 for Firestar kit. Just take your crackly. They're using a coating that we just don't. It's not an AP coating. It's an explosive coating. Ones are extra crackly. Yeah, grind it up. It's kind of more like a like an acetone. Coating. Yeah, coating they pop. Yeah, it yeah. When it gets a it's slurry. just not something we can do without yeah. going through all the DOT stuff, and again, which we're trying to avoid. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there's no new Quest kits planned at the moment, but that doesn't mean we won't maybe reintroduce some old kits. We've got lots of old parts that we'd like to use up from old discontinued kits. Uh, again, it's just a matter of time and money. And, uh, you know, if you look at some of the things we're doing, the reload adapter system and the, the USPS shippable reloads, these are, you know, we're, we're trying to target areas that we know will bring in more revenue, you know, um, make, the, make our existing product more useful, maybe get some market share back, and that kind of thing. And uh, hopefully make it possible to do some of the projects. So. Are there any other questions? Anything else on the, uh, like the long, like 1320, 38 case? Any uh, other reloads? In the, I mean, I like white lightning, but... Yeah, nothing planned, but okay. uh, just because it isn't planned doesn't mean we can't do it and we won't do it. Uh, you know, we know there's a lot of holes in the in the matrix to fill. And we'll get to it when we, when we get to it. Um, yeah, I mean, what, here's another thing we'll probably do... Uh, Probably do a Sparky in the DMS uh, K case. That's that's a that's an obvious. The uh, uh, dark matter is really going well. We're really happy with that. Um, people love that H uh, one fifteen and the what is it the I uh, I two seventy. I don't even know my two eighty. Yeah, too many. You numbers. got too many products. Too many products. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really you know. Customers in the hobby, I mean, just by nature of the competition, have much more variety than is economically, than economically makes sense. You know, if somebody was to sit down and say, here's, because you look at Estes and, you know, they'll say, well, any, any propellant as long as it's black powder, right? So we just don't have that luxury. We have to have, you know, white, blue, green, red, orange, fast, slow, 
Sparky. How about a zebra stripe one? That would be kind of cool. Zebra stripe, yeah. Multiple colors. Fast blackjack and white lightning. <laughs> it just, you know, it just raises the overhead. It, it, it makes it, it makes it difficult. I understand why everybody wants it. It's, it's they are fun, but uh, it constrains us in different ways, and it constrains the dealers because there's no dealer that carries the entire line of product. Um, it just, you know, just can't be done. Any other questions? I got one question. Sure. Um, when you're in production to make a batch of motors, yeah. how many motors are in a batch? You do, it can you be do. from four to three or four hundred. Okay. Depends on the size. I was wondering how many thousands are in the batch. Or yeah, or no, uh, well, some, in some cases we'll get an order for, you know, we, sometimes we get an order for 2,500 motors, not necessarily from a customer or a dealer, but maybe from a, a commercial co company. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple batches of propellant in there, but sometimes we're making a thousand or more motors at a time. Okay. But it's still small batch production. You know, All right. It's one room about half the size of this room, maybe a little less than half, where all the single-use motors are being made. And a room the same size where all the reload kits are being made. I was just wondering if you're doing like S and thousands per no. 50,000 a day or something. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can't love that. <laughs> the, the, the biggest production we had was when, when Estes was buying motors. We were, I mean, we were making our own motors, and then we had to make their motors, and that was, that was quite the thing to see. Mm -hmm. Was uh, ramped up, being ramped up. We had to hire six more people to, to do that. Okay. All right, I'm just wondering about that. So, Thanks. Yep. You made it. You said a hint. I don't know if it was on the Facebook page or where it was about some new kits possibly down the line. Yeah. Are you referring to just the four inch, thirty eight millimeter yeah, ones? Yeah. And, and, and well, okay. There is one more. Uh, I don't know if Charlie wants me to say this, but uh, we have a, a kind of a scale light kit we're working on, and that one is pretty close to being released. That's fine. Just have to do the box label and the instructions, and that one's ready. So it's a it's a two point six kit, but it's scaleish. Scaleish. Yeah, yeah. Scaleish. Scale life. Scale life. Yep. Pseudo scale. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Guys, want to hear about Samurai? Of course. Yeah. 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 All right. Who's Semrak? I don't know. Some guy named Randy or something. I know. Right. So we, you know, what, what, what is this? Oh, well, I wanted you to give me the nozzle so I could sell it. Like you like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talent. Hey, Semrak, we've got uh, 42 more kits to put out. And then the entire line will be back out like before. Um, the only things we've decided to discontinue basically is the X kits. So those were the ones where you buy the parts from us and then you have to go online and buy the instructions. Um, we're not going to be doing that anymore because it had so many inferior parts like rubber shock cords and no Kevlar and, and those kind of things. And we've decided we're just not going to do that. Um, but we'll have all the mainline kits out, including, including the Saturn 1B. Uh, hopefully by the end of the summer we should be totally uh, in production and everything at all. All right. Any questions about anything? Um, you're all invited, of course, tomorrow to come to E Rockets. You know we've got the world's largest selection of rocket kits with over 725 of them in stock right now. Um, free to shop for the day. Uh, we'll be open from about 10 until <coughs> 7 or 8 at night when you guys are done shopping. But you know. Feel free to come out. If you don't know where the place is, get a card from me or grab one of the uh, programs. Our address is in there. All right. Great. And my wife made cookies, so the dark side of that. Oh. So, come on down. Thanks, There everybody. you go. Thanks, Randy. Any other vendors that need to talk? Jack, did you talk already? No, I talked last night. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Hey, thanks, everyone. Yeah, nothing's changed since last night. Nothing's changed yet? Not since oh, last well. night. <laughs> no new books you wrote overnight? No, you ran a book last night? Is it by 1.9 conformity? No. Oh, well, I'll take them along and cool. hand them out to our club if you want to. Actually, I'm looking for the white ones. Huh? Well, actually, the black ones? Yeah, I'd like at least one set. Yeah. yeah. I got a pen. I can cut it open. Got a knife here. Oh, there was a. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Yeah. May I want two, obviously? Yeah, just a set, one set. I can't imagine anybody using one. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave you two. That's good for me. Okay. Cool. Got both these plastic in there, so you don't have to throw it. Throw the plastic you got. No, Stick it off. Oh. Stick it in there. Fine, I just can't because I'll give one in here. Oh, there it is. Oh, well. <coughs> yeah, the ones that actually make don't fit a 2.6, but they have another size that's got a little more cavity underneath because it's wrong size. Yeah, it feels like yeah we don't we don't allow them in our launches because it, 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 it I mean aluminum on aluminum just cut, cuts aluminum away and you get yeah, more slop well, in your okay. yeah. aluminum spalls and so does lead. But I'm a firm believer in talcum. It makes yeah, a great lubricant. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, I, I don't. I, I, I know people who don't. Under, That's the problem. Do, yeah. Don't understand baby powder. <laughs> <laughs> they don't use it. Well, yeah, this is going to have a problem. But on the tart rockets, which are you know, twenty ounces or so, it's not a problem. If you high power, yes, you have a little bigger problem. I'm sure. Yeah. We made stuff out of this because we couldn't afford blow So you have any problems with I just I was gonna show them at my my talk and I just so, forgot. Because how did you end up having the produce and stuff like that? Those how the paper except it had to be hard. It was the piece that was Yeah, that was the thing. It's house. a it's a device so that I cannot stop. I got a few things in my house ever. I got six days cold. I mean yeah, there's a few failures on the failures not even the great in the performances is not true. Yeah, I mean well it's because the machine that makes them so what they do is they take the blank square around and they just they put it on the machine and it, it's a rotating thing like a beach yeah yeah because yeah. during software well, updates well if you look you at the, the blanks there they look like boxes you can only not they, stop it you they, can't they have screw them on the machine <laughs> the machine rotates just it puts it into the model heats up and it blows it and then it comes out and they just unscrew it yeah like i was telling you last night it's 4 it's that 4 inch i just know about that company uh, 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 yeah, yeah, so yeah, there was just a dealer. The dealer? Yeah. I was going to do it. I told him to open up a box and full of Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. Well, actually, there were 24 millimeters. He all these old motors. Yeah, I, okay. I didn't remember. Well, he was a dealer distributor. We actually bought our... I'll let you know, you might get a he apparently he doesn't want to stop. Maybe I can just sell it. Yeah. He bought a lot, a lot of Actually, stuff. I can't. Yeah. Maybe I can sell it back to you. Can I sell it back to you? I don't have to have a seat. I didn't buy it. What? <laughs> I, he, we got a bunch of uh, air spike kits for a 4 inch group, and they're all supposed to come with N50 motors. I put them up the box, and it's just like that. It's full of. And the Sparky reloads, 38 millimeter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not, well, not 38. From last game yeah, from 20, 29 millimeter. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. It was your stuff. Well, we got to work it out with the dealer. We have, well, that's that's Bay Area work. Yeah, yeah. So I got it, but he didn't. I, I've written him a couple of times now, and he hasn't answered. And he's usually pretty good at that. But we well, must have been on the road or something. Yeah, he could be. I don't know. On a launch. Hmm. I don't think there's anything over this weekend. You ordered little motor, little motors, and you got a box full of big motors. Oh, well, no, 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 no. It's, we yeah, ordered, I ordered a Toyota no, Corolla, but we got a bunch of and and I got a Mercedes uh, class. Class. I don't yeah. want this. It sounds like it's something somebody else's order. Yes, it does. But yeah, yeah, but somebody else should have complained. I, mean, I didn't get, you know, I opened up, I got a box of F50s, ordered M Sparky Reload. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, yeah. you, you ordered a Toyota Corolla and you got a Mercedes S class. Shut up. What a bargain. What a saving. I'm playing. Oh, yeah, it's. Well, I could have listened to it. Yeah,